Hey everybody, it's Melanie coming to you from the Outer Banks, North Carolina. It's really bright out here. <laughs> Even like facing towards the house, it's all reflecting back. But I'm here. We're going to be painting a mandala on this piece of paper. I'm also going to be time lapsing it, so bear with me just one moment. <laughs> all right, so we're in the right spot. We're in our bikini. We're jamming on. Living our best life, right? There's a lot of construction going on, so I hope you don't mind the noise. Um, I'm gonna also be cleaning out my pen here, but it's been, I don't know, about a week since I got on. And um, I use these painters' pens, backwards, I know, from Walmart. And I'm not a big supporter of Walmart, but it is what it is. So where to begin? Uh, this last weekend, we celebrated Lulu's 10th birthday, and our oldest daughter, who's 11, threw her a surprise party. And all her friends came, had some good family friend people come and show up, and just all around good times. I got a phone call on Saturday saying that I was the last one to leave the horse property the night before. And I left the, or I was not the last one. She accused my husband and kids of being the last ones to leave the farm the night before. And how they're always leaving gates open and they're always doing things wrong. And I said, well, just to let you know, I was the last one, or I was the one that was at the gate and the white car that left, but that doesn't mean that I left the gate open. And I know for a fact that I didn't leave the gate open because I do it the same time, every time, to prevent me from leaving the gate open. <laughs> I'm a Virgo. I had horses growing up. Um, it was not very often that they got out. They did occasionally, but over the years, the grand scheme of things, for the most part, everything got closed up. Why? Because it's important for their safety, other human safety, anybody's safety. And uh, I don't leave gates open. Same cycle every time I walk him in, turn him around, shut the gate. I barely even let the gate leave my hands. I was continuing, or I was then threatened if this happens one more time. And I've pretty much had it. There's been a lot of stuff that's gone on at that farm that I have not agreed with, but I've kept my mouth shut because I didn't want to stir up trouble because I didn't want to have to find a new place for my horse to move. But obviously, the universe is now forcing me in this direction of moving our horse. And because of my connection with horses, because of this ability to hear their emotions, hear their thoughts, hear, hear all of that. When horses are separated and alone, there's an immense sadness. I could hear it before, but I drugged myself so I couldn't. Um, they hold an immense sadness in their hearts. And they build bonds and friendships that last lifetimes. How do I know this? So when I was seven, we bought a pony from a horse dealer. And that's somebody that would like go to auctions, buy horses, and then like try to match them up with people and make money from it. Exploitation. And he found, or he had this Chincoteague pony and a quarter horse. And my mother bought the pony named Sea Star. And asked to buy the quarter horse but he said no because he loved her and it did a lot of riding with her and so annie and seastar were separated and when i was 12 annie had become too old to do the things that the man needed her to do so he decided he would sell her to my mother we had an established herd of horses at that time man uh, we had an established herd of horses at that time, and 
with an established herd to bring in a new horse, it's difficult because they're then the outcast and get beat up a lot and run around and they have to like show their worth to the family before they let them in. They're alone, they're isolated, all the things. And Sea Star was one of the higher ranking horses in the herd because there's an alpha pack system kind of like wolves, except they don't eat meat. <laughs> and uh, she was kind of a boss lady. Well, Annie showed up at that farm and my horse Sea Star didn't even need to see her or lay eyes on her. She knew she was there and she stood next to that barn four days because you quarantine them when they come in from a new place so you don't get the rest of your herd sick. So she stood by that barn. She gave up her ranking. She gave up her family. She gave up her herd and she comforted and stood by an old friend. Meaning horses have memory. Horses are intellectually there and present and make conscious decisions regarding their behavior. It's not just a fluke. It's not just a random occurrence when you see intelligence in animals. It's because it actually exists within inside them and they're willing to show it to you and show you compassion and all the things that they're capable of feeling. And so yeah, that's my story of Sea Star and Annie. And when we released Annie out into the pasture with the rest of the horses, Sea Star was her friend. She stuck up for her. She protected her. She didn't allow her to be bullied. And she remained her best friend until the day they died. Another time I separated Lucky, my horse, from Sea Star. Drove him down to Long Island and they needed another lesson pony. So I said, I've got a pony up in Ithaca. I can bring her down if you want her as a lesson horse. And so we brought her down. He didn't even like, I, he heard her whinny. That's all he heard. He couldn't have smelled her. She was too far away. And he started screaming. The horse scream, it's very loud. And they whinnied to each other. And we finally like brought them back towards each other. And you could not separate the two of them. Um, they were so bonded and he would no longer listen to me. He would no longer do what I needed him to do. He was unrideable because he was so mad. Um, horses remember. Horses know each other. Horses create family bonds and friendship bonds. And so now I'm at this crossroads where Lucky's been at this location for the last five years of his life. He's struggling because of eating hay in a hay hut. He has heaves, even though I have not called a vet. Why have I not called a vet? Because I worked in the heaves research barn at Cornell University for a year. I understand what heaves is. I understand exactly what causes it. And at this point in time, I didn't really have any other options. And to get a vet call to your house or place of residence for horses is an extra $200 out of your pocket just for the vet to show up. It could be a five minute call, it could be hours, and we do not have thousands and thousands of dollars to spend, especially since we pay $400 a month now, every month to keep my horse. So I was presented with this opportunity to say, all right, I'm out and I'm going to trust God, and I'm going to trust that we're going to find a place for him. And God and I had a conversation, and I said, you got 30 days. It was originally 60. Now it's 30. Things haven't been going well. <laughs> um, I said, you got 30 days, and either do this for myself and our daughters, or I'm going to have to put him down. Melanie, how could you put down a perfectly healthy horse? Well, I'm not willing to separate him anymore. The woman at the farm asked me, why don't I just fence in a small area for him and then he can't get access to the hay? Well, then I'm isolating him and I'm forcing him to be by himself and completely alone again, which has happened before. And honestly, I don't want to see that for him. He deserves so much better. 
he deserves. He deserves all the love and all the things. And as much as I want to keep him in my life, it's selfish of me to do so, especially if I'm not the one that's able to care for him anymore because I don't trust anybody else to do it for me anymore. He deserves better than that. He's been a wonderful friend and family member for the last almost 19 years of my life. And so, yeah, I'm going through a lot of things at the moment. Um... I'm really trying to keep my vibration high because I know that that works with manifesting. I know that miracles happen every day and I know that in order for those miracles to happen, I've got to be in a good place to receive them. So while we are actively looking for a farm to purchase here in the Outer Banks, um, it's very expensive. Uh, 260 acres goes for $1.3 million across the bridge. <laughs> and I understand why, and I, I get it. Um, but, like, the most that we can even get mortgaged for is probably $500,000. And um, it's pretty slim pickings for any place that we could have property. So another question that would come up, I guess. Hang on one second. Well, why don't you move to some place that has more property available for a cheaper price? That's a great question. There's a couple of reasons. We have spent the last six years building our lives and community here on the Outer Banks. My husband has had a consistent job since 2019. So for three years, December. So we're going, his is his fourth season that he's doing at the same location. We are now starting a juice business that we wouldn't be able to start if we didn't have the contacts and friendships and community that we have. Um, moving somewhere else also comes with all of its challenges of finding new places to work and establishing all of those connections and community over years of time. Um, I promised my kids I would not remove them from the friendships and the home life that they've had here at the beach until they're older. Uh, and the last part that I feel like is so important and the biggest reason why I started manifesting a farm and wanting to buy a farm was that there's so much developing happening here on this beach like there's so many other places and I don't want to see it developed anymore. And so I was like, I'm going to set my sights on 260 acres over the bridge. Granted, it's some marshland. It's some um, canals. It's not perfect like pasture land. It's heavily wooded. But I wanted that property for $1.3 million because I didn't want anyone to build anything on it. I, there's a 26 acre chunk of land in Kitty Hawk for the same price. I wanted that land so that nobody else could build on it. Every time we knock down a tree, every time we knock down bushes, every time we knock down the native habitat, we are removing the houses and homes of so many species of animals, insects, all of the things, all the creepy crawlies, everybody. And I don't, I don't want to see that happening anymore here. So this is my very hard video to talk about. I'm going to show you guys where I'm at in the process. Um, that's where I'm at in this whole journey. And I guess we'll see what happens and we'll see what transpires. But I listened to a spiritual teacher of mine after all of this went down. And I mean, like, crazy shit happened. And for once, I wasn't starting it, which is remarkable. Um, <laughs> but crazy shit went down. And it put me in a really low, sad place. And so I listened to one of my spiritual teachers. And she said to don't stop living. 
like no matter what's going on at this point in time, don't stop moving forward and doing what you're doing and working and going the distance for what you need to achieve in your life. Um, because that's the place that I need to be for the good to come out of this. And so I didn't sleep well at all because of what was happening and still woke up at five o'clock in the morning with Christopher to make juice. And no matter what goes on, no matter what transpires, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep moving forward and stay positive and know that Whatever happens is meant to happen, and I am exactly where I am meant to be. Oh, you guys. I just had the biggest mistake. <laughs> As I was saying, whatever happens is meant to happen. The giantest puddle of paint just fell out onto the paper. So I can't even hold it up to show you guys. I guess I could. Oh, you're still recording. So like I could show you this way. This whole puddle. That all just came out. When these. Hold it now while I'm talking. <laughs> that whole puddle. Right there. Why? What is. It just keeps flipping around on its own. Well, that's weird. Sorry, guys. So I tried to flip it around for y'all to see, but it's not going to happen. There's a huge ass puddle on my page. And I guess it's confirming that everything is going to happen the way that it's meant to. And it doesn't always look the way that we expect it is going to look. And it's not always going to be cheery, happy, perfect times. It's going to be stuff that you got to figure out and work through. But in the end, the lesson, the journey will still be beautiful. And we do the best with what we've been given. So I've been given a really big puddle of gold paint on a page today. And I've been given some circumstances that are, like, legit scaring the shit out of me. Honestly, like. <laughs> but I'm not going to make him move again. If I can't find something, I'm not making him move again. I'm not making him give up his friends. I'm not putting him, like, I want wherever he's going to go to to be better than he has now. That's the number one thing. And in order for that to happen, I've got to be there feeding him every day. I've got to make his air-conditioned barn stall so that he can breathe easy in the summer. I need to make him his vegan raw juice pulp cookies every day and hand them out the window to him and heal him with the Mama Mel love that I heal everybody around me with. And if I can't do that, he deserves to be, have his soul and spirit free. I want him to feel free. I want him to be free. And right now he's not free. And um, he deserves better. So that's where I'm at. That's the current challenge of life. I know that so many people are going through challenges. I know that so many people are losing loved ones. I know that so many people are taking unexpected journeys that they didn't think that they would be taking, such as more giant puddles of gold on my paint. Or on my painting. But it was in the same spot, so that was good. <laughs> the other one still hasn't dried. Uh, I know that people have been going through the, the stuff and there's a lot of grief and there's a lot of transformation. I want you all to know that these journeys of darkness, shadows, and grief are way easier when we're like walking with God and walking with the presence of Jesus and whoever you believe in is your higher power and your creator that tells you the voices of like love and kindness and being good to your fellow man kind of voices. As long as you're walking with that in your existence, you're going to have a much easier time working through these energies than if you are 
trying to do it alone without the power of God or the higher power to help you. This world wasn't created by man. This world was created by something that's much bigger than man. And we are here for a purpose. We are here for a reason. Today's reason is not to be drawing mandalas. <laughs> I'm so frustrated. <laughs> but today's reason is um, to just be here and sharing my journey. Sharing what I know. I know that animals feel. I know that animals think. I know that animals communicate. I hear their voices now. I didn't always. It would be so lovely to be able to move from a very loud place that I live at now. If you can hear all the banging and stuff. And airplanes fly over often. Um, it would be very nice to move from this place of chaos, loudness, constant action to a place of tranquility, healing, space, and peace. I could see the vision in my head. I could see it clearly, but I've seen so many things before in the past that don't always work out. So part of me like doesn't want to get my hopes up. And I know staying in that energy isn't a good place to be either. Like just knowing and having, having the knowing, having the faith, and having the faith in the basic premise that I'm exactly where I'm meant to be, doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing. And by helping and servicing others, it's going to make the world a better place. Um, last night, to get my mind off of things, I made dinner for friends unexpectedly. There was chaotic stuff around my house, but I didn't care. I just wanted to do something for somebody else. And so... We made Asian stir fry. It was delicious. Um, when you're struggling, if you do something for somebody else, it ends up making you feel good inside and raises your vibration back up again. So these are my little tips and tricks shared in a weird story vibe <laughs> on how to help people on their journeys. I am Naked Lady Mandalas, and I don't normally bear my naked body, but because the sunshine's way too good back there to pass up, I am. So you guys <laughs> get to see my shoulders today. Woo! Uh, but yeah, I'm Naked Lady Mandalas because I bear my naked soul and I share my journey with others and I try not to hold too much back. Um, I don't want to go into all the details of the shit that's gone down over the last several days at all. And it's been going down for months and, um, it just got to the point that I wasn't willing to allow people to push my boundaries anymore or to bad talk me behind my back anymore or to... blame me for shit that I didn't do and my family didn't even do like the number of times that I showed up there with the gates open and my family was in New York and I'd it'd been 24 hours since I'd been there the day before so I wasn't the last one to see it that like I don't need to be blamed for stuff that happens when we're not even there and it was three times while they were gone so over the period of three weeks their gate was left open three different times the details of what happens to us in this life aren't what matter what actually matters is our response, our reactions, which I admit weren't as where I wanted them to be. But Eckhart Tolle said that the first thing to do in the step of like healing yourself and fixing things is to like have the awareness. And so I have the awareness that it wasn't handled the best way that it possibly could. But when you come off like that in front of my kids, I'm not going to react <laughs> like a timid little person and go hide away I'm gonna you know be that mama lion boy did she roar Rah. so uh yeah um wishing you guys all the best wishing you so much peace so much love so much namaste I was trying to talk a little bit so that maybe I could I think I could show you guys real quick that's where we're at and one of these is a giant puddle and one of these is a giant puddle but my pen's not working out here I was doing these little swirlies instead, but I got a puddle, so that's what I did. Um, my pen's not working outside, so I'm just going to call it quits and kind of lay here and listen to some stuff and listen to my body. I also started painting a hand pan drum this morning. If you don't know what a hand pan drum is, it is a shaped piece of metal. It's very large. I'm just doing it on the camera, but it's like a dome, and it kind of looks like a UFO, and then you, like, hit it with your fingers, and you have to use, like, the bony tips to get a sound to resonate, and it sounds beautiful. It's so much fun to play. 
Um, but I was asked to do a custom hand pan mandala and you're not supposed to paint him because it can change the pitch, but he did not care. He said, do it anyways. So I'm doing it and it's really exciting and I can't wait to show you guys that. So um, that should be out in the next couple of weeks. I know I take a long time and uh, I'll give you guys the finished product of this lady once she's all done. But um, I had a lot of fun doing the the paint artwork in the background. It's really pretty. All right. So much peace. So much love. So much namaste, everybody. Hasta luego, my friends. Peace.